Welcome to Politics and Right. I'm Expenso Willis, your host. Good morning, Houston. Good morning, Harris County. Good morning, Texas. Good morning, the United States of America. And of course, good morning to the world. How's all, how are all my people doing? I know we're all doing fine because we are going to make sure to do fine. Folks, we have a great show for you today. Very important topics. But before we get there, Let's go to our two incumbent geniuses in the control room. Good morning, my brothers. Ah, it makes me laugh every time you say that. If you only <laughs> knew how dumb I was. <laughs> yep. uh, not you at big all, dummy. not at all, not at all. You big dummy. Well, that's Mr. Dummy to you. <laughs> that's, that's Mr. Sanford. And now, ladies and gentlemen, some wisdom from Jack on KPFT. Well, the wisdom is we're in fun drive, and uh, I put the I put the pencil to it the other day, and you know it would only take two thousand listeners contributing twenty five dollars a month to eliminate all of our fun drives. That's five hundred. That's five uh, two hundred and fifty listeners per fun drive would join up to be sustainers at twenty five dollars. A month would eliminate our fun drives. Yay. Wouldn't that be cool? It would. Wouldn't that, that would be, be cool, cool. Howard? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Okay, you well. Know, you, you know, it's interesting because I'm one of those kind of, I've turned into like a super, super grassroots kind of a guy. And I'm thinking like, you know, that's good. I love that. And you know what? It's even better. Uh, I think uh, if we get 10,000 people given five dollars a month that would be the same thing and that's just a coffee and that they don't even see and we have more than ten thousand listeners we have 10 million listeners around the globe there you go around the globe around the world it's listening to kpft at kpft.org hey you know i didn't have you yesterday to really give you your kudos on that on that voice, Howard, on your new show oh. on Friday at nine thirty in the mornings, Did you that like was it? great. You really, you you really hit it, and whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of vinyls that I like. I don't think you're playing them on vinyl, but you know, oh. I was like, ah, Howard got it going. We got them from vinyl. Jack and I have been uh, recording albums into the computer and editing them for quite some time so a lot of it is vinyl source all right all right i thought it sounded that way but anyway that was great the great show on uh uh, on friday of course you know i had to call in for your very first show absolutely hey you are the man (laughs) well i appreciate that i do anyway folks you know we got to get busy here with the program anyway the title of the show today is humble isd activists fight for free clinic uh, insurrectionist coup plotter may be our next speaker. And that has a whole lot of implications. So Natalie Carter and Eli Porras discuss humble ISDs need to support free clinics on campus. Dr. Fadi Jadao, well, I won't, I won't cover that particular one, but uh, we have a, the other subject is Jordan inches closer to the speakership. I have the subtitle incorrect in the email that I sent out at five. Hey, it was late. I was sleepy. All that good stuff. I'll fix that on the main page. Anyway, folks, um, I, I, before I get started, I want to say that yesterday was a donut hole for the program, which means this today we need to double up and, uh, and really ask, you know, if somebody has that magic number that says, you know what? I, I want you to shut up and I'm going to make you whole. Let's throw a, a, a one-time donation of $600. I'll be like clapping and saying, Ta-ha-ha, thank you, thank you, thank you. Remember, that's not going to politics and right. It's going to the, it's going to the entire new station. But don't forget, I, I have this stuff that I, I'm, I'm doing again. And that is breakfast with Egberto, man. 250 bucks if you give on, on the thing. And look, it's not, look, it's just a, it's just a token of, saying thank you, man. That's all. A token of saying thank you. We can sit down and talk about anything, right? Social Security, Medicare, uh, healthcare for all. Uh, since we wouldn't be on air, we can talk about the, the, uh, the, the problem in Gaza. We can do anything you want. 
So anybody who goes ahead and say, you know what, I want to get this guy on the fast track so that KPFT can get its its uh, sustenance. I'm going to give 250 or more, you know, and uh, that would be uh, breakfast with Egberto. You can also go ahead and and uh, say, I want to become a sustainer like Jack was talking about. You know, Jack was saying, hey, 25 bucks a month will bring us will take us right here. You know, okay, 50 bucks a month, we only need a thousand people doing that 50 bucks a month. But guess what? If we have a lot of you calling in and say, I am going to do five bucks a month. That's a coffee. I don't even see that. Coffee a month to support KPFT and ensure that politics and right can stay on air. Let's do that. But but whatever the case is, we're behind. I have to raise five thousand dollars in these uh, weeks that we're doing the sh- the program, which turns out to somewhere around three hundred bucks a day. So please go ahead and whatever you can give, get a T-shirt, get the Politics and Right T-shirt or the KPFT T-shirt. I think that's a contribution of a hundred dollars. So you can call seven one three five two six five seven three eight. Again, that is seven one three five two six five seven three eight. Hit extension one. And you will immediately get somebody who can help you out. And it's quick, a minute or two. You don't lose any of the program, really. You won't lose any of the program. So again, we need your support. 713-526-5738. Before I get started with the program, let me throw it to uh, to Howard to see if he have any gimme gotchas or whatever for the uh, for the fun drive. Do you, Howard, or do you not, Howard? Ooh, Howard, Howard stepped out a second. Um, okay. Well, we, uh, I don't have the, the sheet in front of me. I but what, it's, I, it's, we can do that a little later then, Jack. We oh. can do that a little later. Let me go ahead and get into the program. Okay. And, and what I'll say is, folks, we are in a crisis in America that we have not been in ever. I repeat, ever. We don't have a functioning government. If something were to occur right now and we had to have authorization from the House of Representatives in the Congress right now, we couldn't function because we do not have the constitutional speaker of the House that directs traffic and allow bills to be brought out. The Constitution did not give a temporary uh, placeholder any power other than to hold the election for speaker and Republicans simply cannot get their act together. They keep putting, uh, uh, well, folks who are unable to win because they are simply in a civil war. So a lot of folks have not been paying attention to this because again, of the Israeli Gaza conflict that that's happening. Well, I should say the Israeli Hamas conflict that's occurring right now. So that's, uh, as you know, the way our news media works, if it bleeds, it leads and important things are taking place throughout the country. And we're not talking about those things. The only thing we're talking about, and look, I understand there are 1,300 or so uh, Israelis that were murdered. And also there are over 2,000 now Palestinians that were bombed to death. You know, as I see it, dead is dead is dead is dead, right? But that's where we're at right now. And that's all we're talking about. You know, I mean, we don't even have resolutions that we can say, let's let's stop the killing. We don't have any of that because we don't have the Speaker of the House. And the question is, how long does it last? Well, it turns out that up to last night, the latest person attempting to be Speaker Jordan, he didn't quite have the votes, but he's going to attempt to throw it on to the, he's going to throw it on to the floor and pressure folks to vote. So I want to give you a segment here of the New York Times that when you read it, it's really pathetic. You think that we are not in a, in a democracy as we're supposed to be in, but we are in, yes, an autocracy, but it's deeper. We we have a government run by mafia. I repeat, 
a government run by mafia. Check this out. It says, Jordan inches closer to speakership, but Republican holds out remain. And this is the point where we need Republican heroes. We need Republican heroes badly. They don't have a speaker they can vote for. They are missing that speaker by five votes or 10 votes or however many votes. Here's what could happen. Hakeem Jeffries, who is the Democratic leader, majority leader in the House, he has the ability to put get his entire conference, 212 votes voting for him. All he needs is five Republican votes to become Speaker of the House. The current, the current crop of people that have a chance to become Republican speakers of the House right now are dangerous because they are not pragmatic. They don't make deals. Uh, the truth of the matter is, uh, the close as bad as McCarthy was, McCarthy could be bought. But these are the guys, Scalise and Jordan. Scalise had to drop out because his nose were pretty permanent. We thought Jordan's nose were pretty permanent, but listen to this. Representative Jim Jordan of Ohio picked up steam on Monday in his bid to become speaker, winning over several of his biggest opponents in the fractured GOP ranks, even as deep reservations remain about elevating him to the top post in the House. Several mainstream Republicans who had said they could not countenance a vote for Mr. Jordan, the hardline co-founder of the ultra-conservative Houston Freedom Caucus, fell into line after a pressure campaign by his right-wing allies and a series of one-to-one calls with him. Their reversal suggests that Mr. Jordan was within striking distance of the 217 votes he would need to be elected in a planned vote around noon on Tuesday, but the outcome remained far from certain. The role of the Speaker is to bring all Republicans together. That's what I intend to do, Mr. Jordan said in a letter sent to his Republican colleagues on Monday. In it, Mr. Jordan acknowledged the deep divisions in the GOP and said he would give more lawmakers input into the party's agenda. We will make sure there are more Republican voices involved in our major decisions beyond the five families, he wrote, using House GOP lawmakers shorthand for the various factions in their ranks. It is also a reference to Warren Mafia families. (laughs) It's funny that they use the term the Warren Mafia families because it's a term that I constantly use. I mean, remember, it is Donald Trump who is pulling the strings behind. Jordan Jordan and Trump effectively ran the coup attempt on the United States. And to think, I mean, this is, if, if this was a movie, we would not believe it. If this were a movie, we would not believe it. But unfortunately, it's not a movie. It's what's happening in our House of Representatives. And notice I said our House of Representatives. While I'm finished reading this, folks, please give us a call at 713-526-5738. If you want to comment about the subject, please go ahead and hit the number, uh, go ahead and call 713-526-5738, hit the number two. But I'd like to ask you so kindly to please contribute at 281, or rather at 713-526-5738, hit the number one to contribute to the program. Uh, that will allow us to continue doing what we do here. Welcome, legitimate reg- and welcome Eric Hayes on the chat. All right, continuing. People close to Jordan, the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, said the number of Republican holdouts had shrunk from around 50 to around 10. Talking about moral fortitude, Sharkula here, stylist. She is in the house as well. Good afternoon. Uh, 50, it went from 50 people saying, absolutely, we cannot vote for Jim Jordan. 
And suddenly, 40 of them, after the pressure campaign, after, after the mafia-type campaign, you don't vote for Jordan, we'll take you out. That's pretty much what's going on in the party right now. Vote for Jim Jordan or we will take you out. And it's working. So far, it's working. It's scary that we have a party that is not only autocratic, but behaves like it is the mafia. That is still enough to block his election, the fifth, the 10 that's missing. But he planned to press ahead anyway, counting on his remaining a position to cave under pressure on the House floor. So it seems like he is he is willing to go through the same humiliation that uh, Kevin McCarthy went through where he had 15 or so floor votes to try to to try to become Speaker of the House. He made it eventually. He made it eventually. But wow. But wow. Leaving a two hour meeting of House Republicans on Monday night, night, uh, the Capitol, Mr. Jordan indicated he would force a series of floor votes on Tuesday until Republicans had chosen a speaker. Well, you know what? Uh, Akeem Jeffries will be up every single time that that uh, Jordan is up as well. And all we need is for five, uh, five, five Republicans to vote for Hakeem Jeffries and the speakership problem will be over with in the house and we will be able to be responsible. So uh, re- responsible Republicans, this is the time for you to call your representative and say, choose country over party, choose country over party. We cannot elect an insurrectionist as the person second in line to become the president of the United States. And why can't we? We cannot do that because if we do that, it is it we are honoring somebody who attempted to overthrow the United States of America. I want you to think closely about that, people. I want to, you to think closely about that. We are about to have elected as Speaker of the House somebody who attempted a coup on the United States, somebody who intended to unconstitutionally overthrow the country. Let's get to Johnny. Come on in, Johnny. Yeah, you know, these Republicans, again, when I say Republicans, I'm referring to Republican Party politicians and people who want to be politicians. These Republicans, they're always doing or saying something that's unusual, unlawful, illegal, unconstitutional, worrying. And in the case of Jim Jordan, I was reminded the other day, because we forget, (laughs) every day it's something different, and it's so easy to lose track of what all these guys do. In the case of Jim Jordan, wasn't he the one that back in the day took a bunch of Republicans, they went down to the bunker area of the White House, armed with their cell phones, and they breached a a secure area, what they call the skiff or whatever that is, while there were proceedings going on. Wasn't that him? Wasn't he in charge of that, doing that? Yes. Jim Jordan has done a lot. But, you know, also, we we should remember something. Uh, Anybody remember Speaker Hastert? Dennis Hastert. Oh, Dennis Hastert, the Denny Hastert rule, which I forgot what it was, but I remembered I didn't like it. Yeah. Well, the Hastert rule said that uh, that uh, I think if I re- recall correctly, is that you can't ha- any bill that passed cannot have abortion attached to it. So, you know, that somehow the federal government will pay for abortion. I think it was something to do with abortion, if I recall correctly. But well, but here's a deal. Here's a deal. Denny Hastert. You, you know, uh, a lot of Republican in leadership uh, have told their people that Democrats are pedophiles and all of that. And as we always speak about, these Republican leaderships, leadership always seem to be projecting, looking in the mirror. Yes. And w- whenever they accuse you of something, look out. It means that they're doing it. Doing it because it turns out that the former Speaker of the House, the former Republican Speaker of the House, Dennis Haster, was convicted of what again? You know, uh, sex crimes. 
yeah, playing with for playing with boys. I mean, having having uh, sex with boys, and then he 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 uh, got he was paying one off, and finally he was put away. But I mean, again, and now they're willing to take the chance with Jim Jordan, who was also a coach, who's also being accused in this case of turning ahead when he knew the coach was messing with uh, some of the young boys in the school. And that's who they're electing as they, they're attempting to elect a speaker of the house. Third in line, third in line. You know, so it's, he, he not only attempted to overthrow the government, he not only uh, used mafia te- techniques in support of uh, in support of Trump and others, but he's also being accused of that. It's a shame. The Republicans. How can go ahead? The Republicans want to put someone like that, a sweaty guy like that. <laughs> In third in line in the White House in succession. That is yes. freaking yes. scary. And what's frustrating for me is when Jim Jeffries is interviewed on the mainstream, so-called mainstream media, or as Rush Limbaugh used to like to call them, drive-by media or legacy media, or however you want to call it. What's the question? They give Jim Jordan how, uh, something about, uh, do you think or do you not agree that you guys, you Democrats, should come up with, can you think of five Republicans that you could vote for? To It's backwards. No, there, there are no Republicans that are qualified. What they should be asking Jim Jeffries for the American people to hear is, which Republicans can they get to vote for Jeffries? Exactly. Jeffries, I, I, you know, it's, around. Not... it's backwards, like everything. Everything is backwards. You know, it isn't unheard of. Let me tell you something. There was a time, let me tell I, I don't know if you remember, California at one time, it's hard to believe it now, but California at one time had a Republican legislature, legislature. And you know who became speaker of that legislature? Not a guy Brady. named Willie Brown. <laughs> Willie Brown was a Democrat voted in by Republicans to the California legislature. At the time, it was a Republican legislature. Those were the days when Republicans were actually Republican legislators were actually normal. They were, you know, yes, they were more conservatives and Democrats, but they all sat down and had lunch together. They didn't have weird beliefs or anything like that. So this isn't something that hasn't been done before. Willie Brown did it. And, 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 and there are many instances that you can find where. Republicans support Democrats or otherwise. And this is one of the times in the country when we need to do that. Give me a a closer, um, Johnny. You know what Johnny Carson would say to that news? I didn't know that. (laughs) (laughs) That's just it. We don't know that because why? Again, the news cycles is nonstop. And that's a prime uh, uh, way for Republicans to do bad and naughty and nasty things in addition to deflecting and projecting. Yeah. And, you know, if if more Americans knew that these things, they would support these things being occurring. But anyhow, Johnny, thank you for the call as usual. Paul Fleming, welcome to Politics Done Right. Paul Fleming says over 450 workers have gone on strike so far this year. Two years ago, that number was negative 44. That's an increase of 900 percent in a historic moment. For the labor movement, workers are done letting billionaires and corporations hoard all the wealth and power. And it feels so good. Let's go to Harry. Thank you for that, Paul Fleming. Paul Fleming, and welcome, Paul Fleming Sr. Go ahead, uh, Harry. Good morning, Sr. Roberto Willis. Buenos dias, mi hermano. Buenos dias, hermano. And um, once again, the mayor of politics on right. I've done right. I might mess that up. Um, usually gets it right with his comments. He's right on about Jim Jordan. Jim Jordan is very dangerous. Uh, he is for the uh, uh, against the um, um, the uh, both impeachments of Donald Trump. Uh, he's just a very dangerous man. I've heard him speak. I don't like the way he speaks. He's very frightening. To use Arnie Arneson words, he terrifies me. He scares me. Um, and like you said, uh, John, Johnny's right. They get it backwards. 
They won't vote for Hakeem Jeffries for two reasons. The Republicans won't do that because he's a Muslim. Uh, he has a Muslim faith. That's one of the reasons. And they don't want a Democrat making decisions. They want a far right person. And the Republicans are good at fear. And as you were talking about with Hastert there, any Republicans that have skeletons in their closet are scared that other Republicans will gang up on them. So they're like, you better vote for this man and put him in there as Speaker of the House or else. That's how they are. And they use fear very well. And talking about Willie Brown, because being a native of the Bay Area, those were the days uh, when you had, I didn't like Pete Wilson or Duke Mason, but you had a lot of moderate Republicans. And that's Mm -hmm. what you're saying, Berto. You've got to get more moderate Republicans to sit down and talk and compromise with Democrats. Now, Joe Biden has tried to do that, and he has had some uh, success with the inflation. Reduction Act, and he uh, has bragged about it because he did get that passed because he was able to do some compromise with uh, some Republicans. But like you said, a lot of Republicans today are not that way. They move further right. Donald Trump and a lot of the rest of them are responsible for that. But we just got to, um, well, uh, I'll just, again, with like what Howard and Jack Van Dever always say, we got to vote the bums out. I hope they do the right thing. I was listening to Sunday Morning Live with Al Sharpton on Sunday and his 8 o'clock show at Wall 2.1. And he was talking about, yeah, just as you were mentioning earlier, a lot of people do not talk about this. We're only a few weeks of a government shutdown. People won't get paid if you don't have a Speaker of the House to call the vote. And uh, Absolutely. 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 Uh, hey, I got to get a uh, prep for a tape that we're going to play because uh, okay. I I'm, I I'm to, I have to close out the show with this this particular okay. tape so okay. uh, I got to go uh, Harry okay. but I need to say okay. a few well, more I'll, things I'll before you go. Uh, okay, I want to say one other thing. Congratulations to Howard and I'll be calling on Fridays. He played one of my favorite Peter White songs, Romance Dance. So congratulations Thank you, my brother. to Howard. I'll be calling him. Oh, go ahead, Roberto. I was Thank you. You have a good one. And thank you for calling as usual, my brother. All right, folks. Yeah, I just want to corroborate what I told you earlier. And that was in 1980. I know for a lot of people, that's ancient times. But in 1980, uh, Willie Brown, a Democrat, became the speaker of the California Assembly. (laughs) He got... 28 Republican votes, 23 Democratic votes. I want you to think about what that what that says, what that means. That was, I find, astounding. That is the type of, uh, how should I say this? That is the type of politics we need today. That politics of, I want to say, camaraderie. Uh, that politics that says, we're going to do what's best for the state, what's best for the country. That sort of a thing. That is what we need. Anyhow, look, um, I want to talk about what's going on in Humble, uh, Texas, also what's going on throughout the country. Uh, the Republican leadership and their right wing of uh, billionaire funded organizations, they understand how politics work very well. And they don't they don't do what Democrats do. And that is uh often just address people around an election. Something that Democrats better wake up from rather quickly. They start on the ground level. They build a base. And that's what they do. They build a base. They start with school boards. They start with commissioner's court. They start with all those lower things that people don't think is glamorous, but are the ones that really affect your daily lives. And that's what they do. And and so all the baggage that they have with the policies they support, that's what they do. And here in Humble, Texas, right next to Houston, Texas, in fact, Houston surrounds Humble, uh, there is a group of right who are attempting to scuttle free clinics in several schools in the district, health care for kids who need health care, a moral thing to do, an ethical thing to do. And as an excuse, 
they want to use uh oh well in the in the in the thing from memorial herman they say it includes family planning and that's why we want to vote against it that's why we want the that's why we want the congress or rather the, the bill to vote against it that's why they want to vote against it so the next interview that you're going to have is uh the next subject that we are going to have is about two women the president of the uh Kingwood era democrats as well as a community activist i interviewed them yesterday who are saying no we are going to take a stand right now to those right wingers who come into your city or town and try to tell you that they're not going to do what's best for you but they're going to maintain our ideology so um and let me just say before i continue to please give us a call at 713-526-5738 hit extension number one um after this, I'm, I'm stepping out after this interview because, again, I have to take the wife to the doctor. So here is the deal. This interview ends the show. I want to ask you all, uh, I want to ask you all to please support the program by going to 713-526-5738. We are still at a donut, which means zero, but you can change that. You can say, I am going to support a program that goes out there to make sure that we are, in fact, informed. We work very hard to do that. I, I, I promise you that we continue to work very hard on that. So please, folks, call 713. 526-5738. Hit extension one to donate. Or go to kpft.org. Hit the donate button. And please be sure to say, I want to support politics done right. Again, all the monies go to KPFT, not to me. Before Howard plays it, I want to see if Howard has something to say. Anything, Howard? I'm good. You're good. All right. Well, look, uh, we're going to start playing that video in about two minutes. Uh, actually, not playing the video, but playing the 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 the, 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 the show in about two minutes. I think so, Jack folks, has some wisdom today. Jack, do you have let's any go, wisdom? Jack? Well, well, we have we have tickets. We have October the twenty eighth at the Continental Club. Mike Barfield. Man, is that a good show. Um, and then November 5th, we have Parker Millsap uh, for a $100 pledge uh, at the Continental Club. Uh, we have Dozy Doe Big Barn. Okay, November the 5th, Mark Mayban. He's a local. You know, December 23rd, Hamilton Loomis. That's a $100 pledge. Uh Look, we got down here at the Dozy Doe Big Barn Dinner and a show, Coco Montoya. Man, that's a show. Wishbone Ash. Whew. Boy, I'll tell you what, there's some good shows here. Good good things to contribute to. Absolutely. Uh, Band of Heathens at the Heights Theater, I November the theater, 16th. $180 pledge for some reserved gallery tickets. There's Man. just all kind. There's just all kinds of stuff to pledge for, and uh, you know seven one three five two six five seven three eight extension number one to donate kpfd.org. I thought the donate. band of heathens came in for open journal. Oh, oh, they did. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, the band of heathens is open journal. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, <laughs> yeah. Well, we have to tease. Uh, we have to tease uh, Dwayne Bradley here every now and then. Keep him humble. Well, Dwayne, Dwayne is a great guy. That, that's that's my good oh, old yeah. buddy, man. I love Dwayne. Yeah, that 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 is my buddy. But anyway, folks, call seven one three five two six five seven three eight again. That number is seven one three five two six five seven three eight. 
You can't do better on the radio with what we do here. Think about it. Think of all the great shows that we have here. We bring you Amy Grant right after this show at 7. We bring you then You Talk with Steve Hunter. We have uh, on, on Fridays at 9.30, the one and the only Howard Reynolds doing Wide Space. What is it called again? Wide Spaces? Oh, it's called The Great Wide Open. The and Great Wide Open. You know, we were just going over the request uh, list from last week. Some of them we didn't have a chance to get to because we were pitching and you know playing long songs. But mm. I'm going to screen those songs and get them on this week, including the mayor of politics. He he even called in and said, "Hey man, you got to play some songs for me, Jethro Tull." Yeah. Oh my or my God! So we'll get to some of those. We'll probably play some jazz for Harry as we do every morning. Yes. And uh, just keep the folks uh, keep the folks going. 713-526-5738. Extension number one to make your donation. And Jack, he's going to go back here and do some more math and find out how you can afford this thing. Let's hear it, Jack. Oh, all right. Oh, oh, the, the math. Oh, yeah. it was uh, if 250 people would donate $25 a month sustainer, it would eliminate one fund drive. If 2,000 people donated $25 a month, it would eliminate all fun drives. We would love that. We would love that. Because we hate fun drive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's so much to talk about, especially since the media only has one subject. We have so many other subjects to talk about. But folks, you know, um, it, it's about that time. And uh, I, I got to check out of here as as we get our one and only Howard playing this new new uh, that interview that we did in Umbalize. Please listen in detail to this interview because it's important and it's something that needs to be done throughout the country. Howard, it's on you, my brother. Welcome to another edition of Politics and Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Uh, look, as you guys know, politics begins at home. Politics begins locally. And interestingly, one of the things that many have forgotten is that they have to work locally. Lucky for us, we have people in the community who knows, know that. And that is exactly what they're doing. With us today, we have Eli Porras, who is the president of the Kingwood area Democrats and doing a hell of a job reinvigorating the community, making sure that uh, people are engaged again. And we have somebody making a big difference, not just talking about it, but actually saying, I am going to be part of the solution. That is uh, Natalie Carter, who is a uh, former humble ISD candidate, but altogether she is a community organizer, somebody that's making a difference in our community. Ladies, welcome to Politics Done Right. Thank you for having us. I, I, absolutely so. Well, look, Thank let, you. Let, let me tell you, one of the reasons that I wanted to talk to you is, um, you know, I got a text that concerned me. Uh, first of all, uh, Natalie, as somebody who's been, uh, who was about to become a board member, you know that the school district decided, I love that cat. The school district, <laughs> this, I love that cat. That cat, that's going to be the star of the program. Uh, I, I noticed that um, the school decided that in a place where healthcare is needed, and you know, the United States have likely the best and likely the lousiest healthcare system all at once. The school decided to do something about it. Humble ISD decided to do something about it. Now we have an issue. Why don't you start by telling me exactly what it is that the school intended to do? And your cat is just fine. I apologize. I have a cat and a dog that are just, you know, emotionally bonded to me. So, and I apologize. The, and so, they're part of the family. They are part of the family. They, they wear blue quite a bit. So, um, so yes, you're right. Um, you know, definitely Humble ISD partnered with Memorial Herman. They were actually approached um, Umble ISD was approached by Memorial Herman because of the surge of um, pediatric ER visits. And um, our CEO or the CEO of Memorial Herman partnered or approached Dr. Elizabeth Fagan, who is the superintendent of Umble ISD, with this idea of a partnership by starting a student health clinic um, located at Umble High School, which would serve as like kind of like the mecca where they have multiple schools that feed into this Title I school, like um, Lakeland Elementary. Um, 
North Bend Elementary, Ross Sterling, um, Humble Middle, they're all Title I schools, meaning that they are socioeconomically disadvantaged and challenged, as well as they're part of a majority of underrepresented groups of Hispanic and African-American students. And so um, it was a great partnership. All of the services that would be provided by Memorial Hermann would be 100% free. And there was even discussions about providing transportation at zero cost, zero cost to the taxpayers, as well as to the parents and the students that partake in this amazing program. So that's how the, that was the genesis of this whole um, partnership. Um, and we're super excited. Um, you know, there was a bomb that was passed to actually build a physical building um, to support this initiative. And right now there's a slight delay because of, of course, construction delays, you know, noted across you know, the country from just the lag of COVID recovery. And so right now they had to represent this um, this partnership because we needed to use temporary buildings since our actual building, due to the construction delays, we're not going to be ready for the next year or two. And so that's where we are right now. Okay, so that explains what the intent. The intent was to take care of the underprivileged, people that are underprivileged. Now, I, I want to make one correction here because I think as long as we always keep the narrative that the reason we're building these entities is to help those underprivileged and we classify the underprivileged as black and Hispanic, et cetera, a lot of our white audience is going to look to some extent and say, well, that isn't something that serves all. Let's make it be clear here. Yes, a lot of the underprivileged are black and Latinos, but in that era, there is a hell of a lot of underprivileged white kids. Also, I have friends who are driving them to schools every day. So that's a absolutely uh, that's a thing. So so I, I want the narrative to be correct here. This You're is to correct. help everybody in the school district. Absolutely. And I apologize for that. Um, I just go off of the data supported by that school, the demographics. I think the majority of the students there, I want to say it's all 82% would be, right. you know, underrepresented groups. And my apologies, you're absolutely right. This doesn't limit, this doesn't exclude any group at all. And not only um, that, this but is a free every group, service. Not to talk over you, but every group as well, the, a lot of the poor kids, they all need it. They're all deserving. And they are there. I just want to get that out there. So this is an all inclusive thing. Well, look, Ellie, you are a very. Uh, Can I interject? Yeah, Can yes, interject ma'am, please do. Yes. Because um, I because this needs to be this is a very important point that she made. Um, Herman Memorial Herman approached Umbel ISD because their ERs have been um, way too busy. Mm -hmm. So. It was in their best interest to have this clinic so that the ER and the hospitals are are free, you know, uh, they're for the waiting lines to be less. And um, so that the population in general will have better access to the ER. Like it wasn't on by Umbel ISD that went to Herman Memorial. It was or Memorial Herman. It was them because they needed a solution to clear up um, their problem. And you know, and that, Ellie, that is such a very important point that you just made there, because what you're telling me as well is that this is not just, oh, we're solving a problem for Humble. This is solving the, pro the uh, community problem, offloading right. some of the kids to places where they, there's easier access for the entire community. It means longer wait lines at the emergency rooms, etc. cetera. It's a very important point to make. Now, Ellie, uh, to you, as, uh, as somebody working in, in the community, you have noticed a certain group of parents trying to make an issue out of a particular segment of that story, of that contract to be signed by Umbel IC. What's the issue that you hear from the people out there that I, we know they're misled, but what have you heard? Well, they have a concern with the family, family planning part of the contract. And because that is so all encompassing um, in general health, which Natalie can speak much um, clearer on all what that actually entails. Um, and so they cannot amend the contract with Memorial Herman to exclude that. So they want to get rid of the family planning, you know, i.e., in their minds, abortion. And, but, we need to go into this understanding that 
every single service has to be parent approved. A child, uh, you know, a child 15, 17, you know, 13 cannot go in there on their own. They have to have parental approval. So in, a, in other words, because of, of the misinformation that many of these otherwise likely good people have, they are willing to cut the benefits of easy access by many students at Umbel ISD and other uh, at Umbel ISD from getting good care. Uh, I tell you what, uh, Natalie, why don't you explain exactly what the cause, what, what's the reason that these folks are uh, concerned about and, and blasting out emails right now. And, and in fact, this is something that I hope uh, the, the, peop- the good people are working on. Right now, the Humble Board is getting blasted by no vote emails. So there is, and that is from people who have nothing better to do than sit down, drink tea, and, 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 and find something to complain about. The, the working people, the people who are most dependent on this, they don't have the time to sit down behind a keyboard and continuously send emails. So before I come to you, Natalie, I want to run back to, uh, to Eleanor. I mean, to Ellie. I don't like to call you <laughs> Ellie. It's Ellie. It's Ellie. It's Ellie. I want to run back to Ellie. Ellie, what are you doing? What is your group doing to ensure that those who have the ability right now to start letting the humble board understand that not because you're getting a whole lot of emails from these guys, does it mean that that is what the majority of the population actually wants? So we have been we have been writing physical letters um, with our uh, complaints. We have been emailing, calling. Um, Kingwood Era Democrats has been sending out emails to all of our uh, members and followers um, to come to the school board meeting tomorrow and stand up. And if you would like to speak, you know, we would love that. Just show up and say that um, that there is opposition to that no vote. I mean, definitely. Oops. No, there is opposition. This is not going to be an easy win. Absolutely. So, so Natalie, tell us uh, what is it exactly now that uh, within this contract that's that's creating that problem? And what is it that we need to do to let the board know that, look, uh, we can't allow a temporary ruckus, which is which is all it is. These guys are going to raise hell for a while and they don't care. Those kids that that are going to be left in with 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 the sh- after the shrapnel is gone. They are the ones that are going to be left without health care as these people go on to their next their, their, their next issue. Right. And so, yes. And so with this um, with this um, kind of bringing this notion of the clinic back up, of course, there was a, an evaluation or reevaluation of the contents of the contract. Um, and as Ellie stated earlier, that this is a, a comprehensive clinic that's going to occur where they're going to give you sports physicals. Um, preventative services, um, dental care, nutritional service, mental health um, services as well. Um, and of course, within within those services, you do have the option to seek family planning services. And as we all know, that family planning or birth control accessibility does not necessarily promote promiscuity. It doesn't, you know, completely discount absenteeism or abstinence, sorry, not absenteeism, but abstinence. Um, but what it does is it gives comprehensive care because we use oral contraceptives to treat other conditions such as ovarian cysts, polycystic ovarian syndrome, amenorrhea, um, just a whole host of things, acne. Um, even in actually in young boys with heart conditions, we use Viagra to help with cardiac contractility. So um, these services will be at their disposal. And of course, you know, you have the pearl clutching Christians who claim Christians, and I say that in air quote because I'm, I believe you know, in in, in Christianity and in Jesus Christ, he's my savior. Um, But they're clutching their pearls at the notion that there's access to, you know, contraceptives and we're promoting promiscuity by having services that will allow students to gain access to some of these things. And that's just not the case. Um, And as Ellie stated earlier, that you have to have parental consent in order to be able to be seen in the clinic. It's going to be evaluated annually. Um, parents do get after visit summaries electronically. They're encouraged to actually be there physically when they actually have an appointment, if allowed or if their schedule permits. So it's just essentially, you know, um, 
just the dog whistle to a lot of the dominionists, and I don't even call them conservatives anymore, radicals, they're dominionists that want to essentially infringe and control every aspect of everyone's lives other than their own. I think, I, I hope, I don't know who are all the speakers, but I hope that uh, some of the speakers go with some of the statistics of people that are doing more harm to our kids right now. Uh, when we look at whether it's trans or whether it's what whatever you want to define somebody's identity by, the one doing the most damage, 14% of all calls coming in for child abuse right now, child sexual abuse, is by pastors. So something that they may want to consider that if we decided to go ahead and start doing the stats on who are the people harming kids right now, it is not a, it, it's not giving them a, a family, it, it's not giving them health care. It's not given them, do you need birth control, et cetera? The most promiscuous is aren't the ones that are doing these things. But Ellie, so let's talk about uh, what's going to be done now. I think the board meeting is on Tuesday, the 17th of October, correct? Yes, the board meeting is tomorrow, October 17th um, at 7 p.m., right, Natalie? Yes. And, um, you know, you'll... Sign in uh, beforehand. There's a phone number to call if you want to be a speaker. And I believe they are putting the whole contract up for vote. So uh, it'll be a yay or nay. And I would like to interject, uh, you know, another statistic. Um, You know, we would all love to think that our children, our teenagers don't have sex. And we know that that is not true. The fastest growing a group that get sexually transmitted diseases are the 15 to 24 year olds. So without comprehensive sex education and access to birth control, this is going to be an, an epidemic. It just is. We cannot put our heads in the sand and just think, oh, my kid's not going to have sex and he's never going to have an STD. Um, We have to protect our children, and you can only do that with um, education and knowledge. Now, interestingly, um, in as much as we make mention of the sex sex issue and that sort of stuff, that is such a very small part of this whole entire contract. This contract is to give health care to students, health care. To make sure that they to, to make sure that they are taken care of, and to try to centralize it on a very small part, family care. You know, I always tell people if you don't like something as a parent, you don't have to do it, but don't hold back. And I hope somebody brings this up, Ellie. Yeah. Don't have one parent, two parent, ten parents put the lives of thousands of parents in jeopardy because that is exactly what a no vote is allowing a small loud sect to decide to have a a unhealthy population you know i i get a little bit more graphic when i'm on my program but since i'm with two decent ladies i won't (laughs) make the mistake of uh, of of saying that at all anyhow uh, well can i interject egberto real quick but you are correct There's about, um, there's, yes, these services only encompass about 3% of all services. So that means 97% of the, you know, the clinic is going to be utilized for other services. In fact, the New England, um, the Journal of American Medicine just came out with a, um, a great comprehensive study of the efficacy of school clinics. And they noted that most of the children um, had an improvement in their or actually were seen and had noted significant improvement in the therapy for asthma. So um, if that statistic proves to be true, which I, I'm pretty confident it is because it was a very, very well done study, that most of the kids are going to be treated for other conditions outside of this family planning realm. So it's really important for us to not throw the baby out with the bathwater just because um, someone has access to birth control that might not even need it for, or actually use it for prevention of pregnancy, but other right. causes as well. To right. every and board, me- like, go ahead. I just want to interject again on top of that. So if you have a child that has, um, gets a cold or the flu or RSV right. and quick intervention, then they don't pass it on to the rest of the school, to their family members. Um, economically, parents aren't going to have to stay home from work. So productivity for the community, um, the teachers. Like this, this is such a, it's not even a trickle down effect. This is just, it just expands 
um, to every single part of the community. And we need to, you know, remember again that this was Memorial or Herman Memorial, Memorial Herman, (laughs) that wanted this because of the ER overflow. But Ellie, just like uh, like, like, uh, Natalie says here, I mean, those points are so important. You are saving you're increasing productivity because kids now can go to a clinic close by before they start spreading stuff around the campus to both students and teachers. I tell you what, and I hope somebody brings this up. The first person, the first person that dies of COVID at school, the first person that that gets severely ill at for asthma at school or has a bleed out or whatever at school. Oh, if anyone who voted no for not having health care. In the school, the death of that person or the illness of that person or the maiming of that person is on them. I hope I, 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 I hope you both of you have great points. I hope you, you get to the speakers who are going to speak tomorrow night and let them know to make the board aware of these issues that you guys so intelligently pointed out, point out. Because I think it's essential. A lot of these people are talking off the top of their heads. They don't really think things through. They're not pragmatic. We have to remember, right now, they frown on critical thinking. You all, you both are critical thinkers. And we're lucky Mm -hmm. to have you in the community defending these issues at the school. Give me a closer, Natalie. Right. And thank you. So and it's not only this is a call to action to anybody that agrees with us currently, um, all the stakeholders, we're inviting you to come to our Humble ISD board meeting tomorrow at 7 p.m. where we can band together. We plan on wearing black to stand in solidarity um, against these atrocities and stand up to the partisan you know, ideologue that will come and try to put on a show tomorrow. Please, 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 you can send emails. You can, you can definitely show up, uh, send good vibes, prayers, support. We would greatly appreciate you all showing up and standing in solidarity with us. Uh, Ellie, why don't you give me a closer and include where the, the address, if you have it with you, and who these folks can email. If you don't have it, it's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll print it. I don't I'll, have I'll, it right in front of me. That's um, fine. I, I, would like to, I would like to say that both Natalie and I are nurses. So mm-hmm. we do know what we are talking about and mm-hmm. affects the community as a whole. So I hope um, and we do wear black and, and stand in solidarity. As nurses, I hope both of you are going to be there speaking. I didn't just say a parent. I hope <laughs> both of you are going to be there speaking. So if both of you haven't signed up. Uh, please. We need your voices. Your voices are essential. My name is like, thank you so kindly, Natalie and Ellie, for uh, for giving this not more than a service announcement. Thank you so kindly for being on Politics Done Right. Thank you for having us. Thank you. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.